Okay, and welcome back. Um, this is for Math for Business and Finance students and Math Applications students. Uh, we're on Chapter 1 doing the Summary Practice Test. And we left off um, with 7 before, so now we got to go down to uh, question number 8. Yep, okay, here we go. All right, divide the following by the shortcut method. 60,000 divided by 60. Okay, all right shortcut method they have zeros on the end here okay well if I have one zero on the 60 that means I could take away one zero from the 6,000 so really all I have to do is just divide 6 into 600 and I'm going to end up with the same answer so 6 into 6 goes once that's zero, and then I just have to bring down my zero, so my answer is 100, okay? Um, if it was, let's say the problem was 6,000 divided by 600, okay? Um, what I would do is, since I have two zeros, I would hack off two zeros there and divide the six into the 60 and get 10. Okay. The shortcut method allows us to just drop off those zeros at the end. Saves us the problem of writing a lot of zeros and the possibility of making errors that are really not necessary. All right, next problem. Practice test number nine. Ling Wong bought a $299 iPod that was reduced to 205 Now in the back of my head, you know, I'm saying, okay, it was reduced, so how much was it reduced by? I'm, I'm thinking in the back of my head, 299 less 205. Right. Ling gave the clerk three $100 bills. Well, three $100 bills is $300. What change will Ling receive? Okay. Well, notice that this here question, all right, remember, um, and when doing word problems, we have what's directly related to solving the problem, what has nothing to do with the problem, and what needs to be modified. Now, this problem has all three of these. Okay, Ling bought a $299 iPod that was reduced to 205 Okay. We want to know what change will Ling receive. This $299 has nothing to do with the problem whatsoever. Okay. Well, it was being reduced to 205 Now that we need, that's directly related to solving the problem because, uh, you know, he's paying for that 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 uh, that iPod. Okay. And then it says three $100 bills. Well, it's a $100 bill, right? But, and this is where this issue of modified comes in, right? If you use the $100 bill and say that's directly related, well, then you're going to be wrong, okay? If you just say, well, the $100 bill doesn't have anything to do with anything, then you're still going to be wrong because, you know, that's what he's using to pay for. So this three $100 bills, I actually have to take the 100 and multiply it by three, and get 300. That's the direct information that I need to solve the problem, not the fact that there's uh, it's $100 and there's three of them. This is the number I need to use. So he's paying with 300, and the cost was 205. Okay. So when he you know gets changed back from the clerk, he's going to get changed back of $95, which is the answer to the problem. Again, this 299 here has nothing to do with the problem. The 205 is directly related to the problem, and the three $100 bills has to be modified in order to help solve for the problem. Okay, and it's asking what change will he receive? Well, if he gives 300 and only costs 205, he gets $95 back. Okay. That's a good, uh, simple example of this thought process about trying to look at the information and, and figuring out, you know, these three things about the problem and what the question is actually asking so that you can solve, use that information to solve for it. Okay. I believe I have just two more questions left here. See if I can't get them through them in this video. 
Okay, Samsung plans to buy $16,000 Ford Focus with an interest charge of 4,000. Now in the back of my head, I'm 16 and four, I'm thinking 20,000. Sam figures he can afford a monthly payment of $400. Okay. If Sam must pay 40 equal monthly payments, so if he has a monthly payment of 400 and he has to make 40 of them, that's 16,000. Okay. Can he afford the Ford Focus? Okay. Now notice, all I did was, was I thought I was actively thinking about this problem. Okay. I was keeping things in the back of my head. I'm sitting here saying he plans to buy you know, a Ford Focus, you know, for 16, an interest charge of 4,000 gives them, gives me 20,000. Okay. That's going, you know, that's the total price of the Ford Focus. Now I'm sitting here going, he can afford a monthly payment of $400 and he must make 40 equal monthly payments. And so I came up with this extra information of 16,000. I don't know if I'm going to use this 20,000 or I'm going to use this 16,000. It's just information sitting in the back of my head because I'm actively thinking about the problem. Okay. Now the question asks, you know, if he must pay 40 equal monthly payments, can he afford the Ford Focus? Well, obviously, when I was thinking about this, if I, if it costs 20,000 and he can only pay 400 40 times, he can only pay 16,000. Obviously, he cannot pay the full amount of twenty thousand dollars for the, the the Ford Focus. So the answer to the question is no. Okay. One other way that I can do this is let me change colors here. Okay, it was twenty thousand. All right, so that's the sixteen k plus the four k. Right, gives me twenty k. Okay, so I have twenty k now. If I have to make 40 monthly payments, all right, I could divide the 40 into the 200 uh, to the 20,000, okay, and that would give me, let's see here, uh, $500, all right, F um, 40 in the 200 goes five times, and I bring down the zeros, so my monthly payments would be four, 500. He can only afford to pay 400, so again. He cannot afford the uh, the Ford Focus. Now, notice I did it two different ways, okay? And you see the two different ways of thinking about it, but they both arrive at the same conclusion that no, he cannot afford it. One was thinking from the perspective of the total amount that he's paying. The other one was thinking from the perspective of can he afford the monthly payments, okay? They arrive at the same conclusion. All right, go on to the next problem. And this is the last one, 11. Okay. Lester Hall has the oil tank has the oil tank at his business filled 20 times per year. The tank has a capacity of 200 gallons. So in the back of my head, I immediately jumped and said, "Well, if the tank was empty, okay, and if it can 200 gallons and he has it 20 times a year, right? That means 4,000." you know, gallons of, of oil he's buying a year. That's assuming the tanks were completely empty, All right? So it says here, A, assume A, the price of oil fuel is $3 per gallon, right? $3 per gallon. And B, the tank is completely empty. Nope, get rid of that there. The tank is completely empty. So my assumption was right. Um, each time Lester has it filled. Well, if my assumption is right, that means he's 4,000 gallons at $3 per gallon. That's like $12,000, right? What is Lester's average monthly oil bill? Complete the following blueprint aid for dissecting and solving the word problem. Before I do the aid stuff over here, let me work through the problem. Okay, so my assumption was right. I, you know, at 200 gallons, 20 times a year, that means he's going to buy 4,000 gallons. Okay, 
at three dollars a gallon right that's twelve thousand dollars a year and we know that there's 12 months in a year right so if we divide the 12 into the twelve thousand dollars that means we end up with one thousand dollars per month okay so that's the answer to what is his average monthly oil bill right now complete the following blueprint all right what are the facts okay the facts are that um, he has it filled 20 times a year and he fills it for 200 gallons okay and the cost is three dollars a gallon okay what am i solving for the average monthly pill average month steps to take okay well the steps to take are the total gallons times the number of times per year times the cost of the oil okay and a key point is that when we come up with that amount okay whatever that amount is um, since it's an average we're going to need to divide right divide by 12 in order to arrive at what we figured out to be the one thousand dollars okay um, you know using the blueprint age you'll see it in the book you know quite a lot I you know I'm not telling you not to do it um, we could have done that through all of the other problems word problems that we had I have a tendency not to um, simply because um, when I'm looking at the facts remember I was talking about direct nothing and modified well that is my facts okay I look for you know, then I'm also looking to say okay what am I solving for okay and then of course the steps to be able to solve for that are the steps so I don't really write down the steps um, I, just by you doing it so many times I have a tendency to know what the steps are in order to solve the problems okay but again this was a look into how I think and hopefully that helps you out too okay so um, I'll see you in chapter two um, for anything else you know either the summary practice test the word problems or the drill problems until then, take care.